from the project. Kiki Nukulu la wanda na amusha kiso jake. From the kufati mapeli makeki. Leta baya baya ni makeup to na boki. Kuwa ngoa ngoa na kuzama na phone. Dasha rasa ni kifunda kizani. Mwaka mwaka na ipima mizani. Hanya hanya abuta konja mafisi. Dara dara atuke kwa konga misi. Zabe ni kosebe kwa mahita wanake. Ah, that was a nice one. Calling out for a mama. Mama. I want a spotty. Tika Kenya. Want a spotty. Want a spotty. What kind of... That is maybe... I don't know. Kikuyu. It was in Kenya. Tika. A friend come from Tika. So today is Mother's Day. <clears throat> I was reminded. And uh, what can we say about Mother's Day? Mother's Day. First we bring in the light. Then we do the contemplation. Mother's Day. Wow. What a day. Why would it be a Mother's Day? We have to Google something. Why Mother's Day? Why Mother's Day? That's uh, the modern mother was uh, championed by Anna Jarvis, an American social activist. She held campaigns to establish a national holy holiday, a holy holiday <laughs> to other mothers after their own mother's death in 1905 she wanted to create a day for individuals to express their love gratitude to their mothers so that was uh, that was uh, significant uh, profoundly good so even the mothers is ceased or alive I think it's due time that the mothers are appreciated if the mother is treated badly she will be bad if the mother is treated by honor she will be good is the mother is nature mother is um, the whole world for us boys i can't say that uh, enough i don't mind the father's day but mother's day should be all about the uniqueness of being a mother so I will combine it with unique, being unique. Let me write something here. Let me see if that was good. Mother's Day. So we, we want to celebrate Mother's Day. And in honor of my own mother, that was that passed away in 2005 my dad in 2006 my father said something about my mother when it was the right occasion for that words those words 
He brought a biblical scripture from David, I think, about a woman. Who will find a woman? It's a strong woman. Maybe I can Google that. Um, the, um, we can we can have some of it in uh, in English. Let's do the time of translation. A good wife. Who finds her? She is worth far more than pearls. Her husband's heart trusts in her, and there is no shortage of gain. She does him good and no harm all the days of her life. She provides wool and linen. And her hands work with desire. I get very moved when I read this. Because um, my mother was a hardworking woman. Her name was Gudrun Christine Myra. Married to Järvolstam. And uh, maybe I will find a picture here. Uh, on the computer. I think I have a picture of my mother. That can serve the occasion. I think this will do it, um, maybe this will do it, yes. This is my mother as a lo young lady. There is uh, no similarities with her and me. <laughs> I don't know whether you can find some similarities, but uh, she is the kind of a Lady, she was this kind of a lady that never stopped. A story about my mother that she told herself. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. She was um, working in a nice home because she came from this silver mine uh, home, <clears throat> daughter of a silver miner, uh, Christian Myra, that was his name. And um, she went far here and there, also worked on a boat from here to Denmark, Hitchels. She was working on that boat. And she was also working in those nice homes. That was uh, at that, those times where young ladies, maybe people even today, will feel some familiarities as they work in nice homes that can afford to pay, afford to pay them. And um, she was a ma maiden and she also <laughs> went to Christian son where my dad was living. I don't know what kind of, 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 of occasion 
uh, she made it to Christian Sun because Christian Sun was far off. That was this coastal town, maybe the some of the largest. Bergen is uh, maybe the largest coast town. Beside Oslo is also a coast town, but um, but uh, Christian Sun. Um, she was working there, and uh, the story she told, I don't know whether it was from that boat, I think that was from the boat, the ship, the, the ferry to Denmark. She was always working. Her hands never rests. If she was sitting down, she was knitting. She was making this, I don't have it here, but it is uh, this, um, I, can, I can show it. If you can see in the background here, this is a picture of the same motive. But, uh, it is a little bit foggy, I can see that. But um, the one I have on the wall, she... Um, wanted to make for me. It is, um, the title of that picture is, um, uh, The Bill of Flut, Seljeflöten. The willow flute. The willow flute. So that was <clears throat> something she wanted to give me while she was knitting it because she saw me with a flute. I got this flute from someone that took it back. But the silver flute I got, I played on and she had this dream, which I never, f I never, I never fulfilled, I never matched that dream. That I would play Ave Maria on a willow flute. If we can find that on YouTube. Um, I don't know where, whether it can be done, um, but <clears throat> that was her, that was her wish, and uh, she had this story that um, those co-workers uh, co-workers that she was having beside was, say, was saying aren't you ever tired she was that strong they couldn't hold on so much. and this family of hers both fathers, father and uh, brothers were well known. Even their grand, their own granddad was well known for their strength. I only remember Max Mira that was so strong that the kitchen was his fighting ground. So if uh, Kai is listening to this, <laughs> I, I remember well that he told us that it is when we came in, my brother and me came into the kitchen and, and uh, Max said, I threw Kai over the floor in the kitchen. <laughs> and there are so many stories. I may make another tube of that. <laughs> and uh, my mother said, no, 
I don't even feel that I have been working. <clears throat> there is another story I would like to mention. Because my mother, she had this breast. She was breastfeeding me, even my brother and sister <laughs> before me. <laughs> and um, she uh, was uh, at a place where the, uh, one of the rude employees said, what big breasts you have. And she replied just yes, straight away because she was not that, she was quite shy as uh, um, yeah, the way she was. She felt uh, big and awkward and all this kind of stuff. It's not a shame because if you look at the picture, she is pretty. And um, I would like to show some other pictures, but not today. It takes a lot of time. I put up those uh, pictures. That, those are nice. And um, he said, what big breasts do you have? And she replied, they have not been in anyone's way. <laughs> and um, this brave woman I want to go into some stuff that may, may be in uh, more the background. But why my dad gave this verse? Because my, he saw my mother as some, someone that was so steadfast. So steadfast. I'm not like that. I'm not like that. But my mother was steadfast. And um, she was a prayer lady. And maybe your leftist doesn't like this. But I don't care. Because why the leftists are so scared? Maybe, maybe because those that pray really changes the world. They change the world because there is power in that force of prayer. So maybe another time I would do a video of prayer. Just to, not that I know so much, but Someone need to say something groundbreaking on these issues. But I'm not prepared to do that. I do what I, I'm prepared for in the limited way I am. So he looked at my mother as someone that you can depend on. And I remember in Kenya, not only with my dad depend on my mother, but even the missionaries. <laughs> I think they, they <laughs> went to, to the place where, where my parents were, were staying because they wanted a dinner. And uh, who else would be the manager of that dinner? <laughs> my mother. <laughs> and um, there is one occasion I would like to mention that we had visitors, of course, from here and there. And uh, I think those were visitors from Norway. I don't know. I don't recollect who that was. But it was certain that uh, it was in this house of Lin. We called, called it by the missionary's name, Lin. Missionary Bjarne and also Lin were there. But we, we, when they, when they went back home, we stayed there. And, um, and, um, a time we got to, to this dinner, my mother said to us children, I beg of you, 
Don't take so much. I beg of you. <laughs> Don't take so much because I realized that I have too, too short. I'm short of everything. So she prayed and blessed the food. Didn't say anything to the guests. Of course, they should eat as much as they would like. And those guests that came to my mother's uh, dinner, dinner plate, of course, they would uh, use that occasion in order to get as much as they could. And uh, no difference with those, I guess. And... Um, she, she said afterwards to us, a miracle have uh, happened. I blessed the food. I asked the children not to eat so much. And there were even more leftovers. There is leftovers from this dinner, which wasn't enough for anyone. So that kind of a miracle would happen. Blessing. She was steadfast and strong. Strong in, in physical sense, of course, I have been touching on that, but also in a spiritual sense. She prayed. And she could see. She was somewhat a prophetess. Because she, she could see, she could know something in advance uh, that would happen. And many, many occasions that happened. She was very mute as a Christian. Um, she, didn't, she felt more or less that she had done wrong. Uh, by the Holy Spirit. I don't know. <laughs> if it was today, I would have smashed her. Because who would deny this lady, the Holy Spirit? <laughs> she was filled from the young age. And she told us this story that her mom called uh, the oldest in that uh, sibling, of those siblings. You, my missionary son. And she felt badly about that. She felt uh, some kind of a wound. Because, wouldn't you see me, mom? I feel I'm going out. I am the one that have this call to be a missionary. I am the one. And um she also told in about herself in those young ages because there was a story to that wound when she, she realized that her mother didn't see her for who she was but her brother maybe the mother that was oh her mother was having the holy spirit full time Back in those days, there were church members in the Norwegian government church, so to say. And she went out of that and went into the free Pentecostal movement. And that was a big issue back in those days. And um, when my granddad, my grandmom died, my mother said, I saw a glory over her head when she ran down to our neighbors she had this glory um, over her head i saw it very clearly and uh, after that she died 
And uh, my mother obviously was filled with the Holy Spirit because our voice came to her in young age. What did the voice say? It was something very far off that a child in those times wouldn't have invented. The voice said, Sudan, Sudan. And uh, what do you know? Those people that we went and met in Kenya, the people that received us in Kenya, Luo people. I just saw a funeral of some uh, family of my friends in Luo land. They are big, uh, big tribe, big people, nice people. My mother heard Sudan. And the Luo people came from Sudan. That was some kind of a realization she, she woke up to in the second period of her time in Kenya. <clears throat> Obviously, that was the Holy Spirit. People from the left side uh, or atheists doesn't uh, really connect. <laughs> they don't connect when something of that kind is told. And they really believe that this is um, this is some odd <laughs> mental psychosis. <laughs> uh, but um, no, no, this is real stuff. And um, <clears throat> from my mother's mouth, I heard those word told, and uh, she loved. And was loved by the Luo people. I think she had a Luo heart. Because right before she died, she got a stroke that lasted maybe almost a year. And she was invalid. She couldn't stand because some of her motoric functions went blank. And um, she couldn't stand on her feet. She was laying in bed. But during that time, she was talking Lua fluently. <laughs> My sister um, said, I haven't heard, heard mom, mom before been able to talk like Lua in fluent way. It was also in Israeli, but in Lua. And um, she lost the limitations when it was in this state of mind. She was uh, being a true Lua, like my bro brother. <laughs> he talks like a Lua. <clears throat> so that was some memories of my mother in honoring her memories and uh, that she was if she hear me now you mom you were overfilled with uh, the holy spirit every day was some kind of a working day you never rested like someone that could is his or her mind you were up to it all the way and you were together with my father and stood by his side def de despite what happened out there and both here so you have tested god and found worthy <laughs>